All right, I want to get these on videos. Um, it says find the a sub n, uh, a sub 4 geometric sequence given, uh, the a sub 1 and r one third. So our general formula is that a uh, sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1, uh, where a sub 1 is your first term, so that's 8. R is your ratio, so in this case, 1 third, and then n minus 1 is n minus 1. Okay, so that's the, the generic format. Now it wants the fourth term, so let's just say a sub 4 is equal to 8, 1 third, and now n minus 1 would be 3. So it gives me 8 times 1 27th, so 8 27th is that fourth term. So if I were to you know, start with 8, and then um, multiply that by a third, I get 8 thirds. And I multiply that by a third, I get 8 ninths. And multiply that by a third again, I get 8 27. So we do see that uh, the fourth term uh, using formulas is 8 27, but using kind of logic created sequence is also 8 27. Um, now, it, no matter what, you change that number, change that number, it's the same exact process. Um, so I don't think I maybe need to do another example of that. That's how uh, you need to approach that on the, on the test. Uh, and I'll give you, I'll write that out for you uh, so you know that format. Uh, looking at the, the second one here, or I guess question 23, uh, this is an arithmetic sequence, and it says find the sum. Uh, you could do this by going, I think we talked about it in class, you could go you know, 4, 8, 12, you know the next one is 16, you know the next one is 20, 24, 28, and then 32. And if you want the sum, just add those up to the calculator. That's fine. Um, I don't have a problem with that, but there are better ways of doing it, more efficient ways, especially if that number gets really big. Uh, the idea is that we want to use um, defining the sum of arithmetic sequence. Remember, it's, it's this formula here, n over 2 uh, times 2a plus n minus 1 times d, or n uh, times a sub 1 plus a sub n all over 2. Either one of those is fine, but if you look at either one, you need to know n. So you need to know how many objects are in your list. Right now, I don't know how many objects are in that list. Uh, and that's the problem with using these formulas. That's why looking at this, doing it this way might be a little bit easier. But if this number here is really big, you wouldn't want to have to go through this approach. Uh, so this is how we do this. We know uh, that 32 is some a sub n. Okay, so a sub n for an arithmetic sequence is always found by a sub 1 plus uh, n minus 1 times d. Well, we know 32 is one of those a sub n's. And just like 8 and 4 and 12 are uh, those a sub n's as well. But I want to use 32 because uh, when I find the n that's associated with 32, it will tell me exactly how many terms are in the list. Uh, so then a sub 1 is 4. Hold on a second. Tablet died. Okay, a sub 1 is 4, uh, plus then n minus 1. I don't know what n is, uh, but I do know my common difference is 4 here. So I get that. So that's, that's an equation one variable. That's pretty easy to solve. We get 28 is equal to 4 times n minus 1. Divide both sides by 4. I get 7 is equal to n minus 1. Uh, add 1, I get n to be 8. So it tells me that there's 8 numbers in this list. Okay, 8 values in that list. And if you did it this way, you can recognize, you can count them down. There are 8 there. Uh, but what's nice about knowing now that n is 8, I can use one of these two formulas. And it doesn't matter which one. I like this one. Uh, 8 is n. a sub 1 is your first term, so 4. Plus a sub n is your last term, which is 32. All over 2. So that gives me 36 uh, up top, divided by 2, which is 18. So we get 8 times 18, which that gives me 144. So if I were to add these numbers up, I get 144. Uh, if you could come over here, do the same thing. Uh, n being 8, so you get 8 over 2, which is 4. Two a's would be 8, plus then n minus 1, n being 8, so 7, times d, which is 4, so 28. So then you get 36 times 4, that's still 144. Um, this one here, they're going to ask if this evaluates. So basically it says, does this thing converge or diverge? Uh, and because we look at the r here, uh, r, the absolute value of it, is less than 1. So this thing does converge. So they want to figure out what does it converge to. Um, 
I think it's more explicit to write it this way, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 and then my 1 third n to the minus 1 because that 1 is your a sub 1 and that's what we need if this thing's going to converge. Um, remember if it does converge we have a formula that says the sum of that infinite series uh, is equal to a divided by 1 minus r. Well, A in this case is the 1. And then 1 minus R, okay, well, R is your 1 third, so 1 minus a third gives me 1 over uh, 2 thirds. 1 divided by 2 thirds is 3 halves. So if I were to look at these uh, terms in this sequence, they're, you know, 1 third would be the first one, 1 ninth is the second one, um, 1 27th, 1 81st. 1, 2, 40 thirds. I think the next one's 1, 7, 20 ninths. If I keep going out through it, I start adding all those up, and I add an infinite number of them up, that sum is going to get to exactly 1.5. Um, that's what we're talking about when we, when we do deal with uh, convergent uh, geometric sequences. Uh, and that's how you're going to do that problem on the, on the, the exam. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a different uh, ratio here. Uh, might be a different number out here. Uh, but you plug into this formula, uh, evaluate, and you're good to go. Uh, I did promise that I'd, I'd put a couple more of these on there. Uh, I'm running out of time right now in third period. So what I will do is uh, hopefully maybe tomorrow, um, because I don't think too many of you are going to get to this portion of the, the test tomorrow, um, I will uh, put together a few more examples like 22, 23, 24 uh, in a another video uh, for tomorrow.